stop, you know? Oh, so, okay. I'm, I'm all right. I'm doing that. <laughs> All right. So guys, there are many of you here today. So before we start, I would like to play a little game with all of you so that you can feel comfortable participating later on in the program. So we're going to do a story building exercise, right? Since we're talking about academic support and we're talking about um, having our own personal, personal approach to learning, I would like for us to build a story um, using one sentence each, right? Talking about our experience with exams. Right? So I would like possibly five participants. So quickly, I would also invite Miss Morgan. She's going to be one of them. So all right, Nadine. So <laughs> yes. So Nadine, you can turn on, you can turn on your mic and get ready. Your camera as well, if you'd like. Um, I need four more people. Come on, come on, you guys. Don't be shy, don't feel shy. It's gonna be easy. Janelle, okay. All right, who else, who else, who else would like to participate? Come on guys, don't be shy. Don't let me have to pick on someone. <laughs> I feel like Tahira should be one. And I see Tahira's image. When I saw Tahira's photo, I was like, what, what is this? She, she's getting all the good energy there. Come on guys, come on. Come on. All right, how about, oh, somebody I know. Quasi, how about you? Oh, Quincy, Quincy Morris. All right, so you can turn your mic. So we need three more people. Who's next? How about you, Soini? Soini. Soini. I'm just speaking. <laughs> no can do. Ever. All right, no problem. All right. Um, how about, how about Daniel Cooper? How about you? Would you like to participate? It's not hard to make just one sentence about your UA experience and we'll just go around until we finish building a very nice story. All right. I think that, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to give you 10 more seconds for anybody who'd like to participate to participate. If not, we'll just go ahead with who we have. All right. Ah, 10 seconds gone. All right, ready? Let's go. <laughs> All right. So everybody who agreed to participate, if you would please just turn on your mic so that we can we can hear your lovely voices. Here, here, here. Hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. All right. Thank you all for participating. So we're going to start. So I'm going to start. So when I, when I started you in first year, I, I had to do my first exam at Irving Dining Hall. Even though I lived on Irving, I couldn't find it. Go ahead, <laughs> Janelle, Mrs. Morgan. Even though I lived, say anything, even though you lived on Irving, you couldn't find it. I mean, how okay. Find it, yeah. <laughs> all right. So I ended up walking all across campus before I finally stopped and decided to ask someone for help at Assembly Hall. At Assembly Hall. All right, uh, Nadine, you next. <laughs> yeah, I'll just jump Nadine? in for now. Oh, yeah. she's there, she's there, she's there, she's there. Nadine? <laughs> so, Amy, you cannot do that. All right. All right, I'll Sorry, pick up then. <laughs> when I went to the assembly hall, mm -hmm. it turned out that I was the only person there, and that made me very, very nervous. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you, crazy. I'm just realizing that Nadine is actually Janelle. Janelle, you have to change your name. I'm just really? realizing. <laughs> yes, because your name, oh, your name keeps coming up as Nadine okay. over there. Okay. So that's, Je that's Janelle McCoy. Hi, Janelle. <laughs> so you next, Chrissy. I know no such Nadine person. I'm All sorry. Right. <laughs> you can go ahead, Chrissy. All right, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. 
All right, so upon checking my watch, I realized I only had two minutes to make it all the way back from Assembly Hall to the Irving Hall dining room. All right. So, all right. So on my way back to Irving Hall dining room, I, I realized that the two minutes was going fast. So I began to run. After, <laughs> so after running, I, I slipped and fell and could not get up. <laughs> This story so too familiar, I promise you. <laughs> Guys, all right, so you, so I fell. Mm -hmm. While on the floor, I, I sat and wondered whether or not I should even bother going to the exam room. Honestly. But, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, you next, Janelle. <laughs> Guys, it was a lot. We must struggle together. I've been there just like you. <laughs> just like you. I'm Honestly. experiencing that right now. I need to learn the Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. I'm still on the ground, guys. You better go to your exam. That's what you better do. Listen. <laughs> exactly. Um, I tag crazy. What happens next? Uh, yes, where are we now? What happens next? Yeah. Where are we now? Mm. So you, so you no. sat down and you wondered whether or not you should go to your exam. Yeah. All right. You just did not know what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So after surviving my mini mental breakdown, I decided yeah. to finally <laughs> make my way to the dining room and sit the exam. Remember, you don't know yes. where the dining room yet, um, is yet, you know, you're going back to Irving Hall. No man, I'm finding way, I'm finding way, I guess. Okay, okay. I'm finding way. Yeah, somehow, man. Somehow. figure it out. By the grace yeah, of God. somehow. <laughs> somehow. So, drenched in sweat and defeat and half defeated, I did my best to do my exam. I opened the, the, the question paper to the first question and asked, what, what is this? No, I don't like how this story going at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't appreciate you at all. So we're saying what is? Yeah. Okay. And then I remembered that I can center myself, you know, and I took some deep breaths and I zoned in, you know, zoned in on myself. All right. I took the questions them one at a time. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I stumbled on question two. <laughs> <And then Aaron>. <laughs> <laughs> But then, no, but then, that's guys, the story of my life. I a, yeah, yeah. I remember that I have eight more to attempt. So guess what? I focused on maximizing those with the time, then go back to try and scrape marks. Good job. Good job. All right, crazy. Go ahead. <laughs> Give us the, uh, the happy or bad ending. Yes, that submit the paper. <laughs> So after 30 minutes of doing a two hour exam, the exam was finally finished and the papers had to be turned in. All right. <laughs> Not sure that's positive. <laughs> I am fully stressed out. <laughs> I know. Here, I, 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 I'll, I'll give you the happy ending. Fully confident in my decision and with my resolve, I, I, I held, my, held my head up high as I left the exam room feeling refreshed that it was finally over. All right? I'm so sure about that, you know. We're pressing forward in good faith. We're pressing forward. Exactly. In, in good faith. At least, at least we attempted the questions. Yeah, the merit isn't in getting it right. It's in yes. trying, you know? Yes. That's right. That's right. We're, we're going forward. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you both for participating with me and Miss Morgan. That was a lovely experience. So, Miss Morgan, would you mm -hmm. like to go into your presentation? Wait, before you do that, right. I would like to just, just explain to you guys my experience with Miss Morgan. Um, the first time I ever met her, I was, I was at Irving Hall um, after my first set of my second semester, the start of my second semester, I was at Irving Hall dining room and she was doing um, a study skill workshop um, theme, The Grinch Stole My A's. So <laughs> it was right after Christmas and I was just, and we just had finished um, our first set of you exams and we we're just like I really can't believe so that <laughs> you know we did our best we tried our best 
it was a lot of confusion. Likewise to the story, I had some trouble finding my exam location and say, and it was, it was an experience, right? But her, her, her knowledge and her advice, advice, advice to me went a long way, right? And I participated in her, in her, in her, in her questionnaires and in her surveys in order to get a better grasp of how my learning style worked, right? Uh, in first year, I went in with the mentality of just doing what I did in high school. And that didn't really work out the best for me. However, after she gave me her advice and she told me what I should do and how to temper myself and how to center myself and how to take, take, um, take control of the situation, I ended up doing a lot better, a lot, lot better. So much better that it, I was able to get my first scholarship and all those nice things. So likewise, in the same manner, I'm going to provide you with a link to do a little quiz, right? And it's going to, be, um, it's going to tell you what your learning style is or at least point you in the right direction. Hold on, hold on, but we so, don't reach there yet, man. We don't reach, wait don't, a little bit, man. We don't, we don't, okay. This is, you, this, is all, this is what happens when you get the knowledge and the good people, you get excited that you want to share. <laughs> <laughs> want to share. Thanks for that, Orin. Yeah. And, and I'm always grateful to hear of students, you know, who have embraced the knowledge. This is, a, this is a big part of why we do these workshops, right? We want you to reach mm -hmm. the point where you're confident in not just what you're doing in life outside of the classroom, but what you're doing in the classroom as well, right? And that's why we're here today, right? So thank you, Orion, and thank you to each and every of one course. of you who are here this afternoon, right? I wanted to, to say happy new academic year when we're starting. I don't know if that's fair to say. And if you see your face, Orion. Happy new academic <laughs> year, people. Academic year. Happy yeah. new academic year. I don't know if I have any first years here. Wherever you may be, whatever year you may be in, I'm welcoming you to a new academic year because you are here, you are gaining new knowledge, so welcome. All right? Um, and we'll, this, this afternoon, you know, we're going to be running through it. I'm going to be sharing my screen here. Um, Orin would have mentioned that um, he was able to do a couple of assessments and certain we're going to be running through a couple of those today. Um, because the, the whole purpose of being here today is to kind of explore it's a workshop, right? So, of course, I'm yeah. going to, and Orin is with me here because we want you to share with us. It's not for me to just be talking to, right? I need you all to be doing the actual work while you're here, right? So we're going to first and foremost be talking about why is it that we're here? How is it that we're learning? And as we move through, as we move through the day, we're going to be saying, um, the differences between learning and studying and all kind of different things, right? And we're going to do it short and sweet because I'm sure some of you have other dif um, other things that you want to be doing. But the fact that you're choosing to be here, first of all, commendations. We want to see how we can improve our study skills as we're moving forward, right? And we're definitely going to see how best we can figure those out as we move forward, all right? So, Ariane, this is where of you course. Start. Before, let me ask you all, what, what, if anything, do you think is the difference between learning and studying? Anybody? What that is supposed to be in the chat. Open your mic. Chat what, or you what can open your mic. What's the difference between learning and studying? Because a lot of people know when they're not learning, you know, so you should know what, what learning is mm -hmm. to know that they're not learning. How do so you can tell me what they know? Do. Yeah. Mm. How do you know that you're learning? Learning is to understand. All right, so Theomoy Hill says learning is to understand. All right, Theomoy. All right, who else? Studying is memorizing. Hmm. Memorizing, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Studying, All right. studying is basically reinforcing a few information so that you can display it whenever it's required, while learning is when you have it instilled in you so that you can apply it to different tasks and make an effort out of it. All right, so that again, I want right, to get this name. This is El Eli Shama. Say your name for me, darling. El Shama, I silent. El Shama. Say that again for me. So, so learning for you is? Learning. Uh, okay, let's start with studying first. Studying is where you basically reinforce a, a fact or a fiction, whichever uh, information, basically, so that you can it can be recalled upon if required. Mm -hmm. Whilst while learning now, learning is where you apply a certain aspect, a certain knowledge to your everyday life so that you can know how to maneuver, how to best make the best decision on what you are required to do. 
All right, interesting. All so right, I, I like where we'll go in there. Go, go in the chat mm -hmm. from it there. Or right, let me say we'll have of course, here. of course. So Daniel Cooper says learning is the abil ability to adapt to your here. environment. Okay. All right, interesting. So Yini Elliott says learning, learning you seeing the information for the first time. Studying is reinforcing what you learn. Interesting. Right. All right. Go on again. Michaela Barclay says learning is gaining new knowledge and studying and studying is reviewing what was learned. All right. Naja said personally, I wouldn't separate the two. Wouldn't separate the two. Okay. Right. Naja or Naja, I'm not so sure. Forgive me if I'm, I'm messing up your names. If you want to please own your mic mm -hmm. and let me know if I'm getting the names correctly. All right. Ernest is saying learning is gaining. Learning knowledge. is gaining knowledge. on something new. Okay. And studying is cementing that knowledge. All right. So, I'll, I'll, yeah. So, All right. yes, Naja, you can go ahead and speak. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Are you hearing me? Good afternoon. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're hearing you. Okay. Um, personally, it's Naja, by the way. Okay. Thank you, Naja. Go ahead. Okay. So, as students, right, our job is to study, right? And, you know, students is not necessarily categorized by the age, like within zero to twelve, or to um, like we're losing a little bit there, Naja. Go again. You say, students, your or your job is to study. As a student, our job is to study, right? Mm -hmm. And student is not necessarily characterized by age, right? You can be a student of life. So from the day you are born to the day you die, you're pretty much a student, whether you want to admit it or not, because Babies, you know, learn from our environment, whatever, you know, to walk in. Yeah, anyway, that's not what I'm saying now is that um, I think um, learning is the fruit, is fruit, the correct word, of studying. So, like, studying, I would look, at, look on it as studying is interacting with the material, and learning will be you're able now to apply that material or everyday life or to the um situation that requires it. So when you have learned a concept, right, you, you won't ever forget it. Like when you truly learn something, right? Because look at it. If you have walked, right? We learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. Unless you have some form of traumatic brain injury or whatever, you don't forget how to walk. You learn how to brush your teeth. There's many things we have truly learned and as you go along you realize you just don't I personally believe that a lot of um, students, you know, in this day and age, we have, you know, just like when we're preparing for exams, it's not, I don't even think it's really studying. It's more like absorbing information and regurgitating. You know, we... So you're yeah, losing, I, I keep losing yeah. in nausea. You're in and out. But I'm, tell me what I'm hearing is mm -hmm. what you're saying. You're saying based on what I'm hearing that we're, we're all, you're, as students, we're supposed to be studying, right? But essentially we're learning at all points in time. Is that what you're saying? Yay or nay? I might need to jump. Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, because we're, we're, oh, we're not picking try, up. Everything. Try coming closer to your mi your microphone because I, I hear that your microphone gets stronger and then it goes away. So try right, coming yeah. closer to your device and seeing. Don't let anybody else want to share. Anybody else wants to try yeah, with them? If anybody, if anybody wants to, to share, but I do, I do agree with um what Naja says mm -hmm. because like my, my high school's motto is "Vita sin literis mors es," which is life without learning is is death. So mm -hmm. every moment you you are alive, you learn something new. You never truly stop learning until the day you die. Mm -hmm. So I I do agree with her in that in that regard, and saying that studying and learning are intrinsically connected. Because the way how you compile information is you do that by studying and mm -hmm. you learn new information to add to that compilation later. So you mm -hmm. continue learning while storing it in this studying bin or studying chamber of yours. And you're, and you're absolutely right. If that's exactly what mm -hmm. she meant, you're absolutely right. Learning is something that we're doing from once we're born, that's what's happening. We're all learning. That's, that's something that is continuously happening right so what we i'm always encouraging students to do that separation of studying and learning it's it's kind of tricky right in that when she's saying students job is to study i mean i don't like to call it a job but it's studying is something that you should be doing because the studying facilitates your learning 
how do you know you have learned something is a question that I always ask students. You know you have learned something or you should know you have learned something when you're confident about the material. You know, when you can either make a presentation, you can discuss the material with your lecturers, with your tutors, with your peers. And that's the goal when it comes to the academic setting. We're all learning every day how to, I don't know, how to cook, how to interact with our peers, how to prepare ourselves for the professional world. Right, that's what we're learning in this higher education space here because you know we want to possibly start our own businesses we want to create certain products you know using these different chemicals you know but all the, you know where i'm going with this we're learning yeah. but the study skills is what we need to be working on in order to facilitate our own learning that's a challenge that students usually um that's a challenge that students usually face right so how do we go about doing that is we need to determine how best do we learn Remember, we're learning every day, but in the academic setting, we need to figure out how best we learn. And Orion would have mentioned earlier the learning style mm -hmm. assessment. Now, I know some persons would have done this learning style assessment before. For those of you who haven't, we're going to, um, or this is not where I'm going to, uh, you, you can certainly go ahead and share the link. I encourage students to do this learning as style assessment as often as possible. I'm, I'm probably once an academic year, once every semester, you can go ahead and do that now. You know, why Orion would have shared. Right, so please go ahead and click that link, folks. Why do we want you to do that assessment? Right, we need you to be aware of the three learning styles, three main learning styles. It can be broken down further, right? Auditory, visual, and tactile. And when we move into the conversation a little bit more, we're going to tell you why. Because again, this how you study determines how we are going to be learning. We're learning every day, but we're talking about in the academic space here. All right, so we're gonna give you guys a couple of minutes. Um, Ori might want to share about his experience with the with the learning style assessment here. Well, please go ahead and do that assessment so that you can determine your strengths in the different learning styles and then we can see how that will help you as you move along with your study skills approaches. All right? Yeah, absolutely. So guys, go ahead and do as Miss Morgan asked you to. Um, it shouldn't take you more than seven minutes or so. Um, you'll be done about a flash. So for me, um, after being um, doing the study skills assessment with Miss Morgan, I was able to figure out my learning style, right? Which I had up until that point, I thought that my learning style was more practical um, rather than visual. After doing my assessment, I found out that I was mostly visual, right? So I had to change my, 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 my studying approach, right? I thought, I thought maybe if I were doing, if I were doing, um, more if i was doing more hands-on stuff i would be learning the material better but that wasn't the case so being a visual learner um was it means more than just seeing pictures and understanding um pictures right being a visual learner might mean that you have to write down what you've heard or what you've seen in order to be be better able to imagine it right it's using your imaginative space in a way that helps you to um conducive to learning right so for me, that would have that would have meant maybe instead of like just reading it off a slide and then trying to, to store it away in my memory, it would mean that I would have to go on YouTube and look at somebody doing a 3D model of it or speaking about it with, with, with pictures or doing a video essay on it in, in such a way that it, um, it's visually pleasing or going on Google Images and typing in um, a, a, certain, a certain question or a certain topic in order to see how they render it and visualize it in different ways in order for me to grasp it better, right? Sometimes, so for example, with math, I was, I was struggling with math late, um, 1185 for a while, that, that's calculus. And I wasn't getting the, the idea or the concept of what an asymptote is, right? Um, an asymptote is basically a limit of a value that's tending towards something but never truly meets it, right? I was just like, how can something be going towards a number but never actually become the number right so like the limit of extending to five i'm just like so it's getting as close as it, as it can to five but never becomes five so why, why don't just round it up and call it five and call it a day you get me but no it's it's been very important and the way how i better understood it was was seeing the graph and watching a youtube video of that graph being drawn in real time so you would have the x and the y play and you would see that the graph goes towards like x uh, like so five on the y the y axis and then instead of touching it it goes really 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 close and then it just shoots up into the air into infinity gone right and you're just like 
oh, that's what it means. It means that it's, you know, so like the concept made more sense to me because what they're saying is that these numbers, they continue to increase and get closer and closer to the number, but never truly meet it. What that literally means is that the graph, the graphical representation helped solidify that for me. It never, it really never reaches that value. Is that a case that we're just like, oh, it's 4.9999999999. No, it's the number never, it never actually touches that value. So taking into consideration your learning style is very, very important, right? I wouldn't have made the strides. Um, I wouldn't have, have been thriving the way I am now if I didn't have a, a concept of my learning style properly, right? Um, Irving has, a, has his motto to know thyself. I really do feel that knowing thyself helps you to put in context what you're good at and where you need to, where you need to improve upon. And knowing yourself helps you to have confidence. All right, Marcus Garvey said that without confidence, you're twice defeated. So if you have confidence, you already win, right? Okay. So you have, you have to have, you have to know yourself enough to know what works for you and what doesn't. So I hope that this assessment helps you to get a little bit closer, at least point you in that direction. I'm same, I'm same. I, I'm, I'm grateful that you, you were able to share that and that the assessment helped you and how you would have switched up your own study approach when it comes on to your personal study skills there. All right, so let's see how the folks are doing. Has anybody completed it? If so, just let us know, please. You can just drop that you're finished in the chat or you can feel free to open it, let us know. We definitely want to see where we're working on. There's a workshop, so we want to see how best we can help you out here. Please let us know, right? And then we'll have one, wait. No, this is not just hand up from before. Here, Thiamo is done. All right, I'm thanks finished. for that. All right, Thiamo, are you so surprised you by your results? Let us know, are you surprised by your results? Feel free to open your mic and speak. Not surprised at all. All right. You want you can you tell us what your result is you want to share? I will wait on the others. You still there? Tiamoy? You want to tell us if you're a visual learner, you know, or um, an auditory learner or a tactile learner? 50% visual. Primary right. visual. Okay, great. The primary visually. Makes sense. 30% tactile. Okay. All right. And, and what do you study, TMI? This I'm not sure what I study. You're a first year? Yes, Miss. I'm a first year student. I do biology, chemistry, and biochemistry. Do you know what it is that you want to be studying in the future? Yes, Miss. Medicine. Okay, all right. So we're working towards that, right? So the idea here is to see how you can figure out the different study approaches, right? So tell me this now. Using this assessment here, have you been using visual study approaches? Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Sometimes. All right. That's how we're working it out, right? We're working it out, right? So the, the thing with this learning in an online space, right? Learning and learning mm -hmm. and studying in an online space is that oft, oftentimes it, we kind of feel unprepared. Right? And I use this Tajay Gale, this Tajay Gale image because for those of us who were watching the Olympics this year, you know, would have seen Tajay Gale came prepared for Olympics. He was up and running, ready to go. And then he, he, he got, got an injury. I don't know if everybody here was, was watching the Olympics, right? So he was sharing the results. Yeah. Said, yeah, man, drop it, drop it, share it with us as, as you go along, yes, right? Yes, guys. Continue to put in your, your, yes, um, your results in the chat. Tajay was there. He was ready. As many of us are, we start academic year and we think that we're ready for the year. You know, we feel like we're ready for the, the different um, programs that we have, the, the Google, the Blackboard, the Zoom, all of these different things. 
But then something happens, you know, we don't feel that like we're ready in terms of the study skills approaches that we're taking. I remember what, what I started off by saying, the idea here is always to keep in mind, if we're, not, if we're not sure, no, you should have an idea of at the very least the different, love that y'all are sharing the different the different strengths here, right? Of at least if, you're, if your primary strengths might change, you have at the very least an idea of the learning styles. Your strengths in the learning styles might switch up depending on how you're feeling mentally emotionally, physically, you might, you might have to switch out depending on the space that you are in. You understand? You see how the numbers are varied here. There is no one way that anybody learns. So you don't necessarily have to read. Reading is a, is a visual, is a visual um, technique, right? For some people, it can be an auditory technique because you have, you have apps that can um, play the, the text for your outload, right? The idea here is for us to say, okay, what approaches can we take as we move forward, right? Now in an online space, as, as I was saying, it's, it's tricky for us, for some of us. For some of us, we are, we are in a place that is ideal for our learning, but we fully have the ability as individuals to see how best we can adapt, how best it might not be the situation where we're doing it the way we want to, but we have the ability mm -hmm. to switch things up and say, okay, considering the different learning styles here, considering how I am feeling and the tools that I have, I can very well create um, a, a, a study technique that works for me. And that's what we want to talk about today. Because just like how Taj Gil was deciding that, listen, I'm not feeling my best here, but I'm going to keep pushing forward. That's what we want to do. Because the goal here is for me to be the best student I can be, even if it's not going to be on my A game, I'm going to put my 75% there. I'm going to put my 60%. Absolutely. You understand where I'm going? The idea yeah. is to put the best foot forward, the best feet forward, and we're going to put all in, considering what is happening, until I can get into the lab, until I can come and present whatever material I need to, for my marine biology, for my physics orient, for whatever mm -hmm. course it is that you need to do, you're going to put your best foot forward. I'm going to do my theory outside until I can come and actually do the lab work in for science and technology, right? So what we want to talk about now, this is where we'll get into the, 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 the nice part for you all. You all now need to help me out here. I don't know what you need. I know some ideas as to what the students need when it comes on to creating a personal study plan, right? I know what I need for my environment. I am just simply putting some ideas here, but I need you all now to share with me. So this is where I need Luna to kind of open the mic now and talk to me. Right. Usually yeah. when I mean, or in students, generally, when I said to them, I throw it all to them. What do you need for studying? The first thing, miss, I need laptop. I need Internet. <laughs> yeah. I need phone. And I'm like, OK, but that's not just it. So I've dropped a couple of things and I want us to talk about it. Right. So you all share with me now. We'll be, we're keeping it real basic here. And I want you to think yes. about the things that you would need wherever you are. And remember, the places can change. But let's be, let's start with the first one. Do you all create a time? Do you schedule a time? When is the time? When is the best time that you think would be good for you to study? And I'm leaving it open. When would all be right. the best and time? We could, yeah, we could also go. We're, 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 we could also go in the order of those who um answered in the chat. Um, okay, look at that. Like. Name in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the morning. So. Tahira Bisco said in the morning. So what time of the morning? Like early, early morning, not <laughs> after 10 p.m. <laughs> right? so, so Tahira, could you open your mic and tell us like how early? So like early, early in the morning, like you, you wake up, you drink your water, and then you start, you start with the bookwork. So I normally have a routine and I try to start studying by 6.30. Oh my god, 8 a.m. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Truly. So you give yourself about about what 30 minutes, an hour, or or it's ideally I try to study two hours, but most of the time it's actually around one hour, but it's trying to okay. improve on that. Okay. Because I know right. if um I try in the afternoon, I know my brain just gonna shut off. So I just yeah, try to happens. 
Listen, that's mm -hmm. self-awareness right there, that's, a hero. that's an important part. Mm -hmm. well, I like asking students the time because that, that realistic part there is for you to say, I'm going to study at a time when I know I'm going to be more alert. So if you know your brain shuts off at a certain point, you don't put yourself, don't schedule a time to study when you know your brain going to shut off at a certain point. That's important for you to know when you are most alert, right? I've seen sometimes here. Yeah. Yeah, and not so, after 10. Mm -hmm. Not after 10. So Ernest Newman said in the morning. So Ernest, how about you? Would you like to tell us like what time you you you, you do your studying? Um what's that like? And why why did you choose in the morning? Is that the morning was the best or like the morning is the only time that you're not busy? Oh well, um I hmm. think the morning is um afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. I think the morning a good time because when when you wake up your brain is fresh you know it's ready to learn it's not tired it's not it doesn't it, it's not it doesn't want to sleep and you know it's just it's just ready for the day so it's ready for anything that you bring to it not like in the night when you're tired and you just want to sleep and you know so like early yeah. like from from any time between um six and um before 12 o'clock Okay, okay, anytime between 6 okay. and 12. 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. I usually study in the night, though. I usually study in the night, though. If I, get, if I wake up early, I study in the morning. Okay, okay. Okay. Do you have any classes? Do you manage classes in the morning, Ernest? Um, you just do the, you study in the morning and then you watch the classes later on? Is that how you switch things up? Yeah, if I have the time. Okay. If I, get, I wake up early, you know. Okay, no, I, just, listen, I'm, I'm not saying anything. I just wanted to hear you do it. There is no right or wrong way. It's just the way that suits you best. All right, no mm -hmm. right or wrong way. Thanks for that. Thanks yes, for that. Yes. All right, so Ernest. All right. All right, Ernest. So Janelle says not after 10 p.m. So Janelle, would you like to like quickly tell us why not after 10 p.m.? Is it due mainly to being tired? Or like you're just like, no, I refuse to do anything after 10 p.m. Is that <laughs> Janelle? Janelle not sharing. Okay. I, she's probably away from her mic or something. All right. So how about, <laughs> how about the the between one and six? That's I need to hear about. Talk to me about that. 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of early, early, there are a lot of morning people here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Can't relate, but love to see it. <laughs> Talk to me, please, How sir. About you? Mr. Vaughn. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah, we're hearing you now. Hearing you okay. Now. Yeah. Um, between 1 a.m. and 6 p.m., that's when uh, that's when I'll most likely get most of my responsibilities, most of my chores done already. And another thing, that's when everybody in the house basically is going to sleep. So. 1 a.m. and 6 a.m.? Yeah. It's a 6 p.m. a while ago. I was going to say is how you go in non-stop. So no, what I do oh. it in I do it in 30 minute portions. So okay. If, yeah, so I like I read whatever or I study one certain course or so for 30 minutes, and then I get a little break. Give myself a little, a little test talk, mm -hmm. and then I, I go back to it in like the next 30 minutes. But if like I say we're struggling, I say I just switch over same time, same time to our next course. So I don't waste oh, okay. time trying to like try to understand something for like two or three hours. Okay. I, I try to use oh, it the time. Yeah. All right, I appreciate you sharing. So yeah, you need to you. anytime after 2 p.m. is good and she stops at 10. So you have a time block where you put in the work. That that works. I love that people still sharing. So people are still doing the learning style assessments. Moy said after 9 p.m. Moy, I hope you're not going all night every night, you know. That sounds concerning. Yeah, breaks are just as important. Yeah, as breaks studying. are important. Mm. Chanel, anytime. No, all right, Chanel, I need to talk to you know. Free. Anytime you are available or free. So you're not creating. Let's talk about being intentional about the times here a little bit, folks. When I say a message like that, no, I get a little concerning. And Janil is lauding. <laughs> What, Chanel, are you present? You can, you can, you can talk to me a little bit here. Yes, I'm present. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you loud yes, and clear. Yes. Okay. 
So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that um, it's anytime I am basically free. So mm -hmm. you would have um, my brother also goes to school and it's very online and we're in the ah. same space because I realized that, um, what should I say? From my bedroom, the Wi-Fi doesn't pick up as strong. So I have to be also in the living room with him. And then, you know, he's on his class and making noise and I am here on my class so basically when he's finished with school which is around 2 33 um i want a break <laughs> i yeah. want a break from school so like anytime i'm free or anytime like i'm not doing anything i would say you know have an assignment to do let me go and do it or or I have to get myself in the mood you know to go and do some work but i don't really i don't think i have a specific time i remember like when i was in high school i used to um, study in the night like after everybody gone and in bed and yeah. like, quiet and nobody now walk up and down or disturb me I would be studying but it's kind of hard to do that it's now. difficult to do that now and you're, and you're absolutely yes. right so your situation obviously it would be a little bit more tricky for you and you're right if you if after you're helping your brother and all of that you need some rest listen as I said to you, you know we're talking about the whole individual here you remember a part of what I said we're discussing we're talking about balancing everything because you're not just a student understand you're somebody's child you're also somebody's sibling you have your own things going on so certainly we don't just expect it to just be study that's not what it's all about right so if you need to get some rest take, take the rest take the rest and then see where you could possibly insert some time to do your studying you know and figure out the rest of the time you know so, so if someone like you i would say that let you and i have a conversation because if you have all of that going on i'm sure the load that you have is is, is even more burdensome all right but i, I applaud you and uh, i am also doing a double major so it's kind of a bit difficult balancing everything because at some point in time like i'm like i have so much work to do yeah. Shani, we need to talk. Yeah. The support, I'm here to support you as best as I can. All right. So so yeah. as you're seeing here, you see people sharing here. Tahira uses a timer. Monifa says she sleeps early 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Of a lot of late night people like myself here. I'm, I'm surprised at the number of early morning people. I'm actually I shouldn't be surprised because SciTech has a lot of early morning classes. You know, but I love that we are, we seem to have folks here who are aware of when is the best time for them to do the work. That's critical. What I was what I was trying to um, what I was thinking was going to happen is what I should say is that people would be saying that, that they don't have a time. They just do it whenever. You know, that is what we're trying to avoid. We need to be intentional about when it is that we're going to be reviewing material, the material, because that's a skill for us to be able to say, OK, my class time is here. The time when I'm going to be cooking is here. The time when I'm going to be cleaning, all of this, I'm also going to be intentional about setting a time to review the, the course material, right? To, to prepare for my lecture, to prepare for my lab, to do whatever else it is, because that's something that I need to do in order to reach the ultimate goal of learning the course material, right? It sounds like it makes sense, gentle people. That's so nice yeah, that we can do. Course. All right. So we'll discuss time. Right, and when it comes to you, remember this is a general conversation we're having here. You need to know the time that you are going to set aside for yourself. Let's talk a little bit now about course content and material. Right? Mm. Do you have all the course content and the material that you need? Yeah, or do you do or do you are you just going off of the you're flying by the seat of your pants? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So Kelly she says, Kel, sorry, hold on. Kelly, I'm pursuing a major and a double my and a double minor. Wow. Mm -hmm. The best time for me to study is from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. Outside of that, I do assignments. I read, write, learning right now. I'm trying to ensure I take time for myself and not overdo it. Yes, that's very important. You know, yeah. a lot of the times, a lot of the times we say to ourselves that we are science students and we allow like people's perceptions of what science is like and that mm -hmm. it's difficult to sometimes infect how we, we think of what we should be doing. So we are science students think that we don't, we, we, we don't have time to worry about time for ourselves. So I'm happy that somebody, that some of us are, are, are in tune to our bodies to know that we need time because the breaks are just as important. Absolutely. Are we able to access this recording a little Yes. Um, should, yeah. Because yes. yeah. So we need those breaks. Because listen, I when I was in first year, after I figured everything out, thanks to Miss Janelle Morgan, I was like, you know what? Anytime me feel stressed about something, I sleep. I literally had a hashtag. I used to tell my department members that anytime I feel like just I take a sleep, 
take a break, rest. It's not, it's not worth the frustration because the thing is, you know, when you're frustrated and so many things are on your mind, you can't focus. And then you'll just be stuck there. You and the assignment are look at each other like, who are going to do the assignment? Who's going to do it? You know, it happens. Right, so trust, so, many people have said, trust me, love sleep. This day, I yeah. can't. Guys, you don't have to just sleep. <laughs> you know, you can do other things. You can do other there things. There are other to things sleep. to do than sleep, all right? Yeah. You don't have to sleep. <laughs> people want to stop love on the bed like that, yeah? There are other ways. There are other <laughs> things to do. But they can ask for help if they don't want. <laughs> Listen, we got to talk. But they need to message me and let's figure this thing out. But rest is important. Yeah. Or it makes a solid point. I will say that SciTech student, anybody who is doing a science-based course, just, just saying, mm -hmm. being virgin on here, SciTech students for sure are the ones who tend to do the absolute most. They have classes start early, labs going right throughout the day. And you, they, more often than not, they fail to take care of themselves. It's the missing of the meals. It's the not sleeping. It's the going on night up. Mm -hmm. As opposed to students who, when I, when I remind them and I sit down and I say, guys, even in those breaks, when it, in between classes, stop and have a meal. Stop and touch base with somebody. Even if the touching base is with a lecturer and letting them know that you're feeling a bit overwhelmed touching base with a tutor, tutors who would have gone through these same oh, classes God. that you are, you are going through now, you understand, and share with them and get that kind of connection to help you go forward. Guys, do that to help you. That's a skill. Exactly. You understand, so that you are getting the connection you need, that social connection you need as well, even virtually here. There are tutorial hours that are still being held now. I hope y'all are making use of them so that you are mm -hmm. getting the support you need as you move forward. All right? Judith is right. here. Oh, Judith has her hand up. So you can go ahead, Judith. Judith, you can go ahead. Her mic is open. We're not hearing her. We're not hearing you. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just read your message. So, and guess I uh, I guess the assignment takes twice the time when you're tired. It does. It, it, it really it, it really does. Yeah. Right. I I I like your mind. Like you are, in, I know that a lot of us have been there when we're like, we, we went to school the day before and we feel like we don't understand something and just sleeping, like taking that, that moment to like rest properly. Yeah. You wake up yeah. the next morning. Oh, it makes sense. It was like two plus two equal four, you know, like it, it, it works out in your mind so well. So <laughs> taking that time to give your brain a break to focus mm -hmm. on something else. That's why I liked what, um, I don't remember who said it. But somebody said whenever they're studying something and that particular course is giving them a hard time and they're not making a breakthrough, they move on to the next one. Because yeah. sometimes it's not a break your brain needs. It needs, it needs a change. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Switch it, up. it needs switch a it change. Up. Yeah. Switch it up. All right. Um, so the course content, folks, you want to see how best you can gather as much content you do, especially if you're aware of the, the specific topic that you are going to be reviewing for that day have the information, all the information, whether it's going to be um, specific to the topic, whether you're going to be contacting the tutor and asking for the tutor um, tutorial notes, whatever you need, gather all of that, as well as going outside of the class. This is something that students don't do often enough, if at all. You do not only have to depend on the notes that you are getting in the classroom. Gentle people, think yes. of that person in SciTech, think of yourself as a researcher. In the very social mm -hmm. media, the TikTok, the YouTube, the Instagram and all that, we're in a time now where the pandemic, we have so many different persons putting out information related to you all as, as persons in physics and biology and all these in geography, geology. Connect with persons using these same tools Right, we're shifting into tools next. Follow them on the TikTok, follow them on the different social media handles and say, you know, I'm going to hear what they're saying about the topics related to me and see if they make sense. See if they're related to what I am in fact mm -hmm. studying. And then you bring that information into the classroom and say, you know, Miss Sir, Tutor, whoever it may be, they're saying this about, I don't know, marine biology over here in New Zealand. Um, is that something that would be related to what we're doing here? What about the, the rivers in Guyana? This is what I'm hearing. You understand? Let me talk about it here when we're yeah. discussing geography and geology. I'm hearing about this in Australia. We're related to this particular animal here. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't a scientific student, but that's that's the kind of environment we want the higher education space to be like. 
go and Absolutely. do your additional reading like outside of the classroom and then mm -hmm. make the environment one where when they come in, the lecturers them sit down and they're like, I ask me for what the lecturers I hear say. They don't want to just sit down and be talking. You know, it's like me, I don't like to just be talking. I like conversations. I want people to be coming and saying, Miss Morgan, X and Y and Z. And I say, really? A, B, C, and by the time we come, there's a whole alphabet we create, and we're just like, this is what life is supposed to be about. Be that student who is not just absorbing and regurgitating, you're bringing new content and new material mm -hmm. to the table. That's a new skill, so that you're making the, the, the your, this whole thing is about crafting your personal approach, design yes. your whole thing. Make the learning fun for you based on what you would have learned outside of the classroom, bring it to the table and then say, this is what this is what I am presenting based on what I've read. What do you think? And have a debate with your classmates, with your peers, with your lecturers, and see what they exactly. Do. Oh, that sounds yes. good. That sounds like something you can do. That sounds really good. Um, quickly, um, Miss Towns, um, Towns said, I'm wondering if you could please check um your microphone and check that you're using the right microphone interface to see if that's why oh, okay. we can't hear you. Um, I you we're talking about also, no, 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 not you. You're, <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> so, but also, I want, I want, I want to add on to that. Like, it's very important. So, like, guys, for me, especially, I find that my brain has a, a easier time studying material if I've had engagement on that topic with the lecturer in class. Right? Talking about the the, the our debating because I like confrontation. Um, <laughs> debating with your discussion, your lecturer, discussion, or or like discussion. <laughs> yes, discussion. Yes, we like discussion. Um, discussing with your lecturer whether or, or not something makes sense, even if you're reading the slides that you are reading the slides with your lecturer and you're like, something doesn't make sense. Ask how this logistically makes sense, all this works, right? And it's also important since we're talking about course content and material, breaking up the course content and material into bite sized pieces so that you don't end up with a full plate by the end of the semester, right? It's very important for us to, as science students, to, to do wide reading, right? Sometimes having, having some previous knowledge of it makes the connection easier and easier for us to pick apart. So we can, we can have, so for example, we're learning about a device that picks up colors or, or sends a beam of light through something to measure how much something is in there. Like if we can relate that to something that we've seen before in our own lives, it sticks. Right. If we've seen if we've seen a, a speedometer before, like the little hand um, speed guns that the police use, right? When our when our parents were racing somewhere and they, and they get clocked, right? You when when you see it in class and you're just like, this is how a speedometer works. You just be like, oh, I know how that works, or I think I know how that works. And you can talk with your teacher about how you think it works versus how it actually works, right? Yeah. So stuff like that is very important. Um, quickly though, um, Shani was saying that. She doesn't feel like going back to the assignment after watching a movie and stuff like that. Mm, I, I, understand, I understand what you mean. Like it, it gets oh, so easy to no. get too comfortable when you're taking well, a break. That's definitely the talk about when we get to technique, Shan Shaniel. And yeah. also about balancing stuff, right? For sure. Because it, let's remember we were touching on just being real with how we're feeling. Because sometimes we'll go around to movies and all of that because we're trying to escape the work. So sometimes we need to check in with ourselves and find out why you don't want to go to the assignment. You know, that's a conversation we're going to have as we move on, right? Let's, let's, okay. let me not skip over to the tools though. Let's talk tools real quick, all right? I mm. wanted to, to throw out to the, to the students who are present here, whether or not you have the tools that you need to study. And this is me asking a very genuine question. I know that we have the pandemic going on. You know, we're doing the things virtually, but can you say that you have the tools? And when I say tools, I'm talking internet, laptop, phone, what, whatever you need. Do you have the tools that you need for your personal study? So Ernest is asking to the tools that you need for yourself. I don't know what tools yes. you need, but the tools that you need. When I think tools, I'm think basic tools for me would be the computer, um, internet, light. I would hope that, that everybody has that, you know, that kind of thing. Do you have mm -hmm. the tools that you need? Yeah, okay. So people are saying, please know that not all instructors, instructors are like this. Um, hold on. Referring to what exactly? All right. So, all right. So of, all right. Explain to me why. <laughs> oh boy, that is said the instructor makes it. Oh my, I understand the concept okay. of learning. 
lab instructors mm -hmm. are something else. If you try to confirm something they ask you, they don't know what that is. Not all okay. That's a solid point. Hold yeah, on yeah. a second. There I can... mm -hmm. So you so so Daniel, I'm I'm going to assume that you've tried to have a conversation and the instructor isn't allowing that that space for you to have a that that's something so that that's something I need to know here. But that's certainly mm -hmm. a challenge. You know, we definitely want to be allow you to be in a space where you can have a conversation with your peers. That's incredibly unfortunate. So I'm I'm definitely gonna note that here. You know, and if you want, please shoot yeah. me a message and let me know if that the particular course, if anything, so that I can share as well. I would have, I would appreciate that. I would definitely yeah. appreciate that. Lab instructors are test you. Oh my. Yeah, oh my. so I, 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 I want to add something real quick about lab instructors. Yeah, they, it can be. So when I was doing my first electronics lab, right? We were having a really tough time because it was the first time using electronic devices. Like we've been doing the theory, but never really used it in real life, right? Every time um, we would go up to the teacher and ask him like, does this make sense? Is this right? He just say it in his low voice and be like, me no, no. Just, I don't know, right? And for the longest time, I was just like, why isn't he telling us the answer? Isn't that what he's here for? And then they take me. That's not what they are there for. They're, they're there to, 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 to allow us to demonstrate the phenomenon demonstrate, for ourselves yeah. and realize and make the connections ourselves. Because what we have been, I've, I've been doing in class is being told what things should look like, how things should behave. In physics, for example, we are given what a certain constant is, the value of that constant. But in the lab, we, are, we do an experiment to get that value. So it's not like we just get the value like them to say, oh, um, this is pi, the value of pi is this. Just take that face value. No, we expected to learn. So it's it's more tough love than than them trying to be like especially hard on you because they do want you to get through because most lab instructors are people who have gone through the system and they're postgraduate students and they're doing and they're helping to carry out the lab with you and they want you to reach to the same place that they um they they get to by allowing you that time to realize that a part of discovering new stuff is working working on your own and trying to figure out the phenomenon for yourself that's how you make the breakthrough right um so stuff like that I, I completely understand so it took a while the way how I got around it was to speak to other postgraduate students right your 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 specific lab instructor may not be may not be may not be willing to tell you it outright because they want you to discover it for yourself but if you need a a hint or a helping hand, reach out to other postgraduate students, reach out to mentors or senior members of your department. For example, I help a lot of my students, um, my physics department um, students with their labs by pushing them in the right direction and showing them parts in the textbook that might help them, help them make the connection by seeing what's going on, right? So if you're having issues like that and you realize that the lab, your lab instructor is just not working with you, you do more wide reading and ask other people, right? If your lab instructor, and the best thing to do too is to look at the lab beforehand. I'm assuming that you get the manuals beforehand, guys. Try at least before you go into the lab to ask another person, how was this lab? What was this lab like? What do they usually expect you to do? Look it up on, on the internet. What, 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 what do they expect you to do? Because all of these labs have been done before. The purpose of a scientific lab is to to replicate it, to prove that the lab is, 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 is true and to prove that the results are true, right? To prove that something is true. So, so many people around the world are doing the same exact lab as you. So you can have that kind of idea of what they're expecting and what to do rather than just depending on your lab, your lab tech. Um, yeah. Some of them are, are, not all of them are like that, as you said, but like sometimes that's the way you have to go around it, right? The people want and, interactive sessions. It should be said, it should be interactive. And I agree with you. I agree with mm -hmm. you. What, what I will say, if you find that the persons are not being or allowing the space to be one where you're expecting a kind of interaction, even though there, there is the situation, as Oren is saying, where you know they're kind of allowing you to go into that critical thinking space, which is fine, there should also be that allowance for you to be engaged, right? Yeah. So please, please, you know. Um, Janelle, Janelle and Oren, could I come in? This is Marvadine. 
single oh, month. Hi, hello, so you know. hello, Dr. Sing Wilmot. <laughs> yeah, we, ha we had a meeting, but you know I have to come over here. I know. I know. Guys. <laughs> meeting just oh. finished. Good I evening know. to all, all FSD evening. students and to the host of the year, Oren, and to the speaker <laughs> of you. the year, Janelle Morgan from <laughs> the ASU. Um, I, I have to come in on this one, and I, I just very quickly want to, Oren and you have said everything uh, mm -hmm. great, but I got I to gotta ask the students who still feel mm -hmm. that um, there are some of us as, as lab instructors and lecturers who are not facilitating your learning process. That is after you have recognized and accepted your role in the teaching learning process, because each of us involved has a role, right? Um, at the center of the teaching learning process is, is indeed that human interaction, I keep saying, between teacher yeah. and student. So even though, and now we're in COVID times and it's even more difficult, you have a role to play, your, your instructor has a role to play, and how that interaction happens is also important to your experience. Just want to tell you, if you're still feeling like that and if you have those particular problems, the FST wants to hear about it. Somebody just put the, put the number right there in the chat for me. Have those students have a talk with me, please. Give me a call, Give send me a message on that WhatsApp number. Some students in here have the number. I'm not gonna put it, one of them will put it. We want to hear about it, okay? Because we are interested in your experience. Remember, we are going to establish your responsibility and your instructor's responsibility. And when you have a healthy relationship, it means that those expectations yeah. and the roles and responsibilities of each person in the relationship is established and understood so that we don't have some unrealistic expectations of each other. But if your expectations are realistic, you do, you and most of FSD people, man, are people who are interacting with their students. If that is not the case and you have had that experience, please let us know because it's a work in progress, eh? It's a yeah. work in progress. But the FSD team, you guys must know, are committed to making things better and to improving ourselves to make your experience better. So just send me that message. Yes. I'm, I'm glad that Dr. Singh Wilmot was able to do that because I, I know that that was the case. Dr. Wilmot always says it. She always says it, which is why I said, if you're having a chat, please let us know. And I'm sure that they will do whatever they need to do to rectify the situation as soon as possible. All right. So please, please share that information. And they, I'm sure they're going to sit, um, fix that up for you. ASAP. All right. So we've discussed time, we've discussed course content, we've discussed tools. Let's talk location now. Again, a tricky one given the virtual space. Right, where are you guys studying? Are you guys even studying? That's the question. Mid semesters are coming up, right? Have you guys studied and where? You <laughs> can start lab. Are you guys studying? Have you guys started? Right? And if you have, where are you studying? Where are you studying, Kelsey? Where do you study? <laughs> I know that they're here, but what <laughs> are so midterms are, are here. here. Where, 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 where are, are you studying? studying? You can go ahead and open your mic, Kelsey, and answer. In your in office? As you like. Yeah, let's say it's office, rough. Office, it's rough. So you know, also, some of you have started today. for sure. Oui. Right? Trouble. Anyway. In your bed, in your room. In my room. All right. Hey, be careful about the bed, you know. The bed in can the bed be a the living room. On the floor. All right. So mm -hmm. why are you, why are you telling me that? The next question is, are those locations working for you? Do you feel like you're getting effective studying done there? Especially those of you who say in your bed, on your bed. Because the bed can be a deceiver, I know, be careful. Or somebody's trying to speak in? Who's trying, trying to speak? Kelsey? Hi, this is Kelsey. Go ahead, Kelsey. <laughs> yes, Kelsey. I, well, I don't have a lot of different places I can go, so I try to switch it up. So. I have a desk, so I study at the desk, and I do classes in my bed, and write notes in my bed, and I do homework on the veranda. Because if I stay at the desk and do everything, I will lose my mind. So I had to, I had to figure out something. So the desk yeah. is for. So I you, study. But I like when you say you switch it up. 
I like how you, that, that for me is probably the most important thing any student can say is either you're going to know that where it doesn't work for you or you're going to know that you need to switch it up, right? Moniva says she avoids the bed. Shania says your yeah. room is private. And th this is important. Listen, oh, see, even if you're not sure where it works for you, it's important for me that you know where it does not work for you. You can still be trying yes. to figure out where it works for you, you know, but know where it doesn't work for you. I would rather have a student who says, Miss, I try here, Sandy, don't work, and I try somewhere else, right? So you, you're still trying to figure out where it works for you, that you're staying somewhere that you know don't work for you, right? So th this, is, this is, again, the skill you're trying to find, again, especially for those of you, I'm trying to remember who it was that was saying that they were at home um, still helping with the sibling, right? Especially in instances like that, when you're home and you have a, like a number of persons around you, that could be something that Kelsey says she's so general so, stuff. No, wait, that, that works. No, I used to study on my roof. I, I can't. Back at home, I used to study on my roof. That was really calming. And like, it's it helped. It just, it, listen, it's yeah. fine. I don't do anything school related on my bed so that my brain knows. Look at Tyra with the wisdom. I study when I'm taking yes. a shower. How do you study when you're taking a shower, Daniel? Just going around. Or unless you're, you, playing, you're playing a YouTube video, that's music. fine. That's fine. Floor is good. Family house. That's all I guess. I'm having struggles with the family house. I, I'm with you. Why? What can, okay, so here's the thing with location, guys. Remember, we're talking about using the study skills based on your learning strengths, right? If you can't switch up the time of day based on what's going on, you say, mm -hmm. well, I'm have the family house thing going on there. You could either say, we're going to, we, we can't move around because the place is packed up. We can adapt by saying we're going to switch the time of day. So we're going to go in the early morning with some people we're doing, you know, I think somebody had shared would share that one to 6 a.m. Because I know that people are sleeping, less persons bothering, that kind of thing. Right. Or if you have the ability to leave and go somewhere else, you do that. Right. Especially for those of those of us who have like you have to be helping out the siblings and all that. I know it's going to be challenging, but I've had students who have had to be switching their schedules numerous times because they have to get up and they have to be helping the siblings. You know, the parents expected to do X number of things in the day. This, this, is, this is you being all kind of skillful because you're doing what you need to do to get your own work done, right? And I commend each and every one of you, right? Again, this is just for you to, to get yourself thinking. What can you do in order to switch things up and you are designing your own personal approach so that so that you can get your studying done to facilitate your own learning and then we're going back to the study technique once you have created that time for yourself once you have gathered your course content and you've added new material to it you have all the tools that you need you have the location set aside i love that tahira here is now saying get someone to keep you accountable then you need mm -hmm. to then decide what technique are you going to use how am i feeling today you know what, I, I know what my learning styles are, I know what my strength is. But remember, I had, I had said earlier that sometimes we're not feeling our best self. So maybe I'm primarily a visual learner, but my head is hurting me, that kind of thing. So I don't necessarily feel like reading. You can still do something though in order to get your learning. So somebody had mentioned earlier that they're, they're probably showering, but they're getting some, um, some work done. You have a video yes. playing, you have a lecture playing. So you have the, the, the information still going in your ear. That's an auditory measure, right? You don't feel like talking to anybody right now. You don't feel like being a part of a, um, a group conversation, but you want to um, get some practice done. So you're going to slip into a tactile measure and you're going to draw some diagrams, practice drawing, whatever it is that you need to do. That's you getting um, some work done. I'm going to do some reading because that's something that I need to do in order to get the, the theories on top of things so that when I get into the different, um, when I get into the lab, I can compare the different, whatever it is that I'm going to be seeing and know for a fact that I'm going to be confident when I look into the, into the what you call the thing that you're looking for, in. It not coming to me right now. Where you look through the something and you see the... The microscope. The mic there we go, the microscope. Yes. So that I know for a fact, because I have looked at enough images of whatever it is, and I can then know when I go into lab, I'm confident in what I am seeing. That's the kind of, of technique we want to use. Implement different techniques from either the auditory styles, the visual styles, or the tactile styles, and use them. You, you decide which one you want to use. If you want to use all of them, do that. So for the first half hour, I'm going to read. For the second half hour, I'm going to, I'm going to play a YouTube video. 
for the last half hour, I'm going to do some drawing or some diagrams. That's where we're up. That's what we're about. All right. Yes. So um, quickly before we move on, I remember that Barclay was asking, "What if? What if I'm easily distracted?" So. <laughs> So he was asking, what if I'm easily distracted? Oh, I thought and you somebody were... said, mm -hmm. oh, all right, I'll go. <laughs> so the what if you're easily distracted, yeah. again, you now need to, need to zone in on what it is that you're going to be doing. If you're easily distracted, the question I'm going to ask you is, are you easily distracted at all times or is it easily distracted for when you're watching a lecture? So for me, I always said to persons, if you find yourself easily distracted in a lecture, find ways to keep yourself alert in the lecture. Right, the one of the most popular ones that I always do with students. If you're a visual learner, find different colored pens, and when you hear a word, you do it or, or a specific term, depending on what the nature is of what it is that you're studying or you're learning. When you hear that topic comes mm -hmm. up, you're going to switch the color ink, right? Or when you hear um, a specific term that you a terminology, a, a topic, a name come up, depending on the persons or so on, you're going to highlight, you're going to switch the color highlighter. You understand? Or you're going to you, you just do something, what, whatever works for you. This Sita, you are saying it, you're switching up depending on how you're feeling, right? You have to find ways to engage in your own learning. You might say, all right, I'm going to record here and then I'm going to stop, right? Then I'm going to record here and I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a break. You can also remember the lectures are recording now. You can stop and you can come back. There's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. as well. So if you need to take a break from being in front of the screen, which is also a very real possibility, stop and take the break and you come back. There's nothing wrong with that. It's for you, however, to take the responsibility on yourself. Dr. Singh Wilmot said it, to make sure that you're keeping up with your course content. Remember what we said it. We said it earlier. You have the responsibility to say, okay, this is a course content. This is what I need to cover, right? How you engage your course content is solely upon you. That's the skill that you need to take up because you are facilitating your own learning based on the approach that you are taking with your study skills. You can learn anywhere, guys. You can learn anywhere, anywhere at any yeah. time. You just need to be taking care of yourself and you just need to zone in on how it is you're going to approach it. If you want to switch it up, that's on you. Just make sure the material is related to the nature of what it is that you're wanting to study. Make sure you can have a conversation about it. Make sure you are bringing material to the table so that you can um, actually move into the space where we're not just studying solely. We are learning material, we're confident in it, and we can ultimately go and practice seed. Right, that's the goal here. All right. Um, Aurean had meant, well, I think I would have said it, right? We we'll want to do a study skills check. That's the final thing we're leaving. Um, even if you don't, we should probably do it here. That's the last thing we want to do because we've been here for a while. What time is it now? 5.47. We want to drop yeah, that in the okay. chat, in the chat, right? right? This, this study skills check I, I ask students to do, you, this is for you now to kind of grade, grade yourself. This is not, it's not a graded thing for real. It's just you assessing yourself as you move along. Drop it in the chat for me there, Aurean. Right, yes, you kind yes. of want to. Oh, oh gosh, let me let me move because some of you might be leaving for real. If you want to get in to touch with me, please go along and, and um, get that information there. Right, I see some people messaging me, guys. WhatsApp, most students tend to prefer WhatsApp, but you can also email me. I will WhatsApp, um, voice note message either one works for me so whichever one you prefer go right along and do that right um um what was what was i saying right the the idea here is for you to just figure out how you're going to craft the plan for you reading for your degree is not the only way to do it. you want to figure out what works for you right the reading is a beautiful thing the information is there the idea is to learn there are text-to-speech apps that you can engage in. You have the course material. Find an app that works for you. Make it play the information that is there so you can hear it if you prefer that way. There is no single way to do it. Use the tools that we have here and switch it up. Right, Michaela, see your hand. Go ahead. Go ahead, Michaela. Good afternoon, everybody. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What would you or what would you suggest for taking notes while in a live lecture? What would Class. I suggest for taking notes? Yes, for note taking. 
because I don't want to just write everything off the slide. But um, you want to know how to take notes? Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. All right, so I so there there are several ways to take notes. I think it would be a little difficult for me to tell you how to do that right now because we're trying to wrap up. But I would say, uh, all right, how best did, did you you did the learning style assessment, Michaela? How best no, did you learn? I came in late. You came in late. All right. Oh. So for me. You want to go based on what the topic is that you're being that that's being covered, right? And you always want to go with what with what the course content is saying, and you're going to sing below what are the highlight points, right? And you're going to summarize as best you can. Usually, the lecturers in in most cases on the PowerPoint slides, they're going to indicate what the high topics are, right? So for you, you're going to go and you're going to write down what the, what those are, and you're for you, you want to type, not type, because you're well, maybe do you are you typing or writing? Are you a type or come again? Right. right. You're a writer. Writing. All right. Writing. So, mm-hmm. Right. So I would say go with go with what stands out to you, right? And you you can't write out everything. You can't write out everything. So exactly. the high the high points are what you want to write, right? And you move all the key. So, so they're saying you finish at the key points. So yeah, the slides you exactly. have to do, no lecturer can write out everything. That's why you have the reading and the listing that you're going to do outside. So go with the high points, right? And then when you move out of the class space, that's where the supplementary reading and the listening and the YouTube videos come in. And you're going to use that and the high points that are indicated in the slides to determine what you are going to be reading outside of the classroom. I hope that makes sense. So the slides should be indicating what it is that you need to go and do outside of the classroom, right? The lecture, the, what the lecturer, what the lecturer is saying and sharing, anything that they're emphasizing, you're going to jot down and you listen to those key points, right? And then you go outside and you're going to follow up. The beautiful part about it again is that you have the lecture, you have the lecture, the videos, Vid- the videos. So you can always go back Mm -hmm. and you don't have to write everything. Just anything that stands out to you, you go back and you play it back. Or even better, you know, you look look at the timing and you say, how long is this class? And you you look at it, you say 15 minutes in, 25 minutes in, and then you can go back and you say, at this point in the class, I need to go and pay attention to this this part of the video because something stood out here. And it will give you an idea and you go back and you watch that point in the video. I hope that kind of gave yeah. you an idea. Yes, thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. No problem. I would also like to add, add something. So Kelsey said it in, in the chat. So a lot of you guys are, you, you know what you're talking about. So Kelsey says, get the substance now and make it cute later. That's very, <laughs> that's very, very, very true. Um, in a lot of the exercise, sometimes if you're if your teacher, depending on what software they're using, they'll bold the parts that they think are, are required, require emphasis. So they'll put it in bold. So you can look for those little things and those little cues and write them down. You don't have to write down everything, right? I for one find that the best way to write things is in like point form, so like bulletins, and then things that come up in brackets, things that are in bold. I always write those down as soon as I see them. And then I reread to see if there's anything else of significance that I would need, right? Because sometimes sometimes the, the definition and then a little bit about, about how to derive certain and certain things is what's important and the rest of it is fluff. So you have to figure out what the fluff, what's fluff and what you need, you know? So yeah. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. Um, let me see, did I miss anything in the chat here? Yes, you can message so, me on me WhatsApp. See. Please and I mm-hmm. message me on WhatsApp. If I don't get to you today, this evening, I will get to you tomorrow. Good people, I promise you that. Love the making recall questions. Listen, guys, look at what other people are saying in the chat, right? Sometimes you will get ideas from others that you yourself don't even know. You try it. If it doesn't work, we'll try exactly. something else, right? Else she mm-hmm. tries to avoid watching recordings if you because it. <laughs> no. Oh boy. No, don't well, avoid yeah. watching. Listen, which is why I said to you, you know, I wouldn't Sometimes say avoid can't watching the first recordings. I, I highly recommend jotting down the times, especially if it's a conversation that is happening that is um, in, important, super interesting, necessary. Jot down the time and you can always go back. You can always go back and you might have like a 10 minute section. If, if you may not need to mm-hmm. watch the whole two hour lecture but there are sections in the videos that are usually very pivotal to your, to your learning. And you can just jot down the time and you might look and you say, 
20 minutes in and there's a 10 minute section and you can skip ahead and you go and there another 35 minutes in you understand just these these key yeah. things you do because you have a video it's just like with youtube or a movie yeah you, you can, can, you can skip the any whole part. intro and it will go right to the nice part that's what you're doing that's the beauty of the yeah. lecture all right and, and a lot of times on your first watching, you can miss something. Even if you're paying attention, you can miss something. And then now you, you look at your tutorial, your assignment, and then you listen to the recording and you realize that, oh, sir, I said the answer, but I wasn't, I didn't hear it the first time around. And that Absolutely. happens. So it's, Absolutely. it's important too, right? Because yeah. not everything is going to be in the side. I also want to drive home something that Miss Morgan said that I didn't get to before, that a wide reading helps a lot, right? As I said before, like having a reference, a real life reference to what is being talked about in class helps a lot. Wide reading helps because you might some mis, miscellaneous information that you got from, you know, a meme on Twitter or, or somewhere else on YouTube. Sometimes that comes in handy. Sometimes thing that, things that you would have never thought of had any educational significance actually comes back and plays a role in like, you understanding it and solidifying it. So that's very important. And I would also like to say, guys, ask for help, like there are mentorship programs. The university has mentorship programs. Um, we, the faculty have mentorship programs, all of, the, all of the things. You can go to the academic support unit, they can pair you up or they can speak to you about different initiatives that can help you, all those other things. Don't be scared to ask for help, right? The times when, 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 when people fail are the times when they try to do things by themselves and bite off more than they can chew and they choke. So don't choke, right? If you need help, ask for it. Absolutely, absolutely. It's difficult to find help. No, CMO, it's no. not difficult. No, what you mean? See, Dr. Singh will not drop in the numbers there. I am here. <laughs> no, man. Mm -hmm. Tell me what kind of help you need. Message me. Message Dr. Singh will not. You will get the help. I promise you it's not as difficult as you think it is. You probably have been contacted with the wrong people. I promise you it's yeah. not. All right, we are here to support you as best we can. Right, reach out. If it's not me, I will refer you right back to whoever it is that you need. You need to get the assistance. All right. Exactly. What, Michaela? Can we find tutors? There might be two. It depends. So, all right, guys, what you can do, if there is, if you can't find an initiative that can pair you up with somebody to tutor you, right? What you can do, you can go and make friends with a postgraduate student. You can go and make friends with a senior um, department member. You can go and even ask your HOD, say, miss me, I've had a hard time at this course. Can you pair me up with, do you know anybody who's done this course or done well in this course that you can call? They probably know somebody, right? So don't be afraid to ask. Utilize every opportunity that is there to you because a lot of times people say they can't find somebody because the the the, the normal way about going about it didn't work out so ask as many people as you can ask your friends do they want to do study groups sometimes the people that you need yes. to do, sometimes sometimes your tutors don't even have to be older than you they can be your peers yes, i've been sir. there right which is also right, can I ask Janella a question oh that's yes. that's dr singleman right let me open my parking yes room. yes that's dr singleman yes dr singleman janelle uh, um have you spoken with or students about um, making you know my 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 thing i live by this making the best of the moment especially lecture and tutorial hours so i just finished out of a a meeting with mm -hmm. hod's and the dean and it um the department in the departments lecturers are saying many of our students are not coming to lectures now it is true that people have difficulties connecting so that considered um, there, it is also true that many students at lecture time, even when we were in face-to-face, -face, um, choose to do something else when there's a lecture or a tutorial. Yeah. And, and in, in the online space, we find that you have your phone and people WhatsApp in you, you're in lecture, you're in tutorial, and you, you're responding or clicking on all sorts of things. Some people might even be watching anime, listen to music. You're totally distracted. The moment pass and then it adds up toward exam. Then you feel like you're seeing the material for the first time. Can, it, can you comment on that, Janelle? Because many of our students- Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we have touched on that when I, I mentioned the fact that we need to be making contact with not just yourself, with the tutors, the lecturers, people. You see, when we, anytime you hear me say you need to just not be depending on yourself alone, that's what I mean. 
right? Remember when I said that the course content and the course material, you're going to come and you're going to be bringing the information from outside the classroom. That's what I mean, right? Well, maybe, maybe I don't even know if I specifically said the tutorial time, but when I say have these conversations, I mean, you're going to go to the lectures, to the tutorials, to the tutorial hours, and you are going to make use of the resources that we have, the virtual classes, the virtual tutorial hours, you're going to reach out to a lecturer, to a tutor, and say you need to have conversations about the material. People, they are, they are here. We are here to help you as best we can. Please virtual thank you. office hours too, Vir Jeanette. Oh, yes, virtual forgive me. I, I beg pardon, Dr. Singh Wilmot. Virtual office hours. Make use of it. So you have the, the your, your associate dean here who is willing to help. And she. this is probably the third one I've done that Dr. Singh Wilmot shows up and is making it known that she is here to assist. So when I cannot say, if I hear one more student say that you know the support is not there, I put it to you that it is also your responsibility, Dr. Singleman said it, you have a responsibility to seek out the assistance yourself as well. When you're paying on the fees, whether it's SLB or whatever it is, you are paying your fees, gentle people, check up on yourself while you're not checking up on your foot. Use your hands and your devices and seek out the assistance. And while you may not get the response immediately, write again, please to write again, leave a message, leave an email and insist that you get the response because you are here and you deserve a response. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. See, Dr. Wilmot, has, she, you shared, yes, yeah, she did. She shared it again, right? You have my information here and we will certainly see how best we can do it. Make use, don't just take content, bring content and mm -hmm. seek all the individuals who are here to facilitate your own learning, to facilitate your learning. Please, gentle people. We shouldn't be begging on that. We shouldn't be begging. <laughs> but, 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 but it's okay, but it's okay, guys. So please, as as Miss Morgan said, as Dr. Singh Wimot said, reach out to people. I know that it can be hard as a shy person or a person who doesn't really feel like they know this university environment well enough to feel like they can speak to certain and certain people, but they are, they're here for you. They've been where you are and they under they understand right reach out to your your your, your representatives in the guild when they have look pretty trust me right you have you have um department representatives you have your president the vice president reach out to one of them they will get you in contact with somebody who can help do not suffer in silence right do not suffer in silence it does not work Trust me, it does not it, it does not feel good to fail and it does not feel good to fail a second or a third time. Do not afford yourself the 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 displeasure of failing something because you are too afraid to ask. Right? Absolutely. You have to get over that anxiety and ask for help, right? Even if you have to ask somebody, say, hey, brother, you can ask so and so for me if they can help me. If you can't even bring yourself to ask somebody, ask somebody that you're okay with to ask for you. Do not give up on yourself by saying that, you know, we can't do it and nobody now go help me because them have things to do or them too busy, no, right? If you ask politely, if you ask, you shall receive, right? Just have the confidence in yourself and just know that you can do it. Absolutely, right? Um, guys, I, I want to just remind you, I think everybody should know by now that you should be registering for the examination size. I, um, Dr. Singlemont, is that something that's been happening? That's a conversation that's been happening, right? Um, I was trying to see if I could find the link here. I don't, um, I don't have it here, but I know, yes, we, we've um, been having that conversation. We've been having, right, I'm trying to find it here just in case. Or right, let me ask you, guys, do you have, have you all access to email? Do you have that link? While um, I'm here trying to find it, talk to me, me quick. Let me see if I should it. try and find it for you. Let me stop this recording. Yes. Okay. Okay. Someone says yes. It's yes. on SAS. All right. Yeah, so um, it's the first thing that um happens when you open SAS for the first time. So they ask. Okay. I just I'm just touching yeah. as many bases here mm -hmm. as possible, as many bases. Um, so everybody also, should be good to go. Yeah. Also, everybody. guys, quickly, quick. Quick, quick, quick thing. Since we're going to transition to like, for some of us, we're going to transition into face-to-face -face exams. I know that there might be anxieties and, you know, you forgot how to do face-to-face -face, um, exams or you're having trouble. Practice from now, right? The best, the best starting point that a lot of us have found is starting to write notes, right? If you haven't been writing notes, if you're that kind of person who just like, mega week, like the week before and then read all of the, the, the 300 exercises, 
that might not work out like in this in this setting, right? So trust me. So go ahead and write. Since we're science students, a lot of us may be using formulae and stuff like that. Write down the formulae next to the topic two and try your best to get back into the mode of memorizing and remembering things to take to take um to take to do the exam, right? Don't let the anxiety and don't let the the, the transition overwhelm you, please, right? We don't want to feel because feeling not look nice and not feel nice. You get me? So just do just do your best and try to adapt slowly but surely you'll get there. And thankfully, um, we've gotten this memo before final exams. So it's mid-semester time. We can like try to make it work. And I, I believe the university is going to try their best to try and meet us halfway there. And the guild is working for you, so don't worry. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Oreen. So gentle people, if you have not yet, you have up until the 13th, I believe, to um, check your exam sites, um, select your examination sites. Please, 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 please go ahead and do that. If you are, if you are knowing that you need to do the same, I'm encouraging you to do that. Guys, the study skills, remember, these are things that you can implement. You have time, you are way ahead of the game here. I commend each and every single one of you for being here. I do. I'm again saying to you, just keep in mind, you, is, the power is within you. It is, right? And if you feel you are still not too sure of it, we had a very general discussion, a very fulsome conversation. I'm so pleased with those of you who shared. If you're still not sure, again, Orion said it, Dr. Singh Wilma said, I'm going to say it once more. Reach out for help. We are here to offer you the assistance as best we can. All right, so that we can get you through yet another semester and you can feel better about yourself. All right, please and thank you. All right, wishing for each and every one of you the absolute best as you are. Well, those of you who are already doing a mid semesters, I hope they went well. Those of you who will be doing mid semesters soon, wishing you the absolute best. And I'm going to pray that you have an even better rest of the semester as the weeks progress. All right, all the very best to each and every one of you. Have a fantastic evening and a wonderful rest of the year. Dr. Singulma, do you want to say anything before we head out? Yes, I, I, there was a scholarship I want to tell them about. But, oh, but, okay, but yes. Be, before that, I want to, I want to say, Oren, um, what are we going to do for Janelle? We we want her to be a FSD. We to, yeah, yeah we, 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 do Janelle, we just can't tell you how much FSD loves you, okay? We can't get enough of her. No, no, we, we, not, we want you to know you have a home right here in the FSD, okay? No, never a problem, never a problem. And thanks to Oren as well. Oren decided to of join course. me. I, I'm, I'm forever here for this kind of engagement. Trust and believe. Yeah, I love I'm here for it too. <laughs> yeah, you two Bye, are, Look you at them two so them well together. I'm Thanks joking. again. Thank you. Or can I tell them about right. a scholarship? Yes, go, go ahead. ahead. Go tell ahead, them they ahead. want to know. They're still here. Tell them, Doctor. Yeah, there, there is. I I sent one. I sent one. Um, that is closing on October twenty second. I sent that one to you through the the guild rep. Um, to your president, <laughs> um, Tyreek. Yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's another one which is, is it was sent already to you guys, but we only have one applicant. All right, can I share my screen? I'm sending Go this ahead. again to Tyreek, right? Because um, there is money and you can get money. So if you're, uh, where are you? You're giving me that, right? I think you have it. If I have it. Not Yes. yes. So you yes. have, yeah, have you do, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So look at this, guys. This is from Huawei, right? So if you are a student from Comsci, from engineering might not be here, but certainly physics, Comsci, mm -hmm. maybe some of the math programs can also qualify. We only have one application so far, the Huawei Seeds Scholarship. Okay. Look at it. If you're a student who have completed your first year or if you are you have completed your second year. So second year and third year students, pretty much. Second and final year students. Guys, apply, apply, apply. All right, you can get, if you get the first place, you have five top participants will be awarded the scholarship. First, you will participate in the, in the um, Seeds for the Future program. So they'll put you through a program uh, 10 of you really, and then they're going to award some, some places. And if you get the first place, you're getting 600,000 Jamaican dollars. If you get the second place, 
or one of the second places, can you see we have two second places? We have one first place, two second places, $400,000, and two third places, $200,000, yeah? I am going to yes. send this, Orin. Um, this is out there. You will see it on the yes, FST it is, it website. Is. Mm -hmm. It is on the FST website. If you go to the FST experience, you go to resources, then you go to the FST, FST experience, and you go for the the undergraduate scholarships, you will see this and you click here for the, the details and for how to ap apply. If you, you will see, maybe there's a, you will see some things going around that says the deadline is tomorrow, October 7th. But I'm telling you now that if you send an application in by Monday, Mrs. Alicia Myers, Alicia.myers at uwimona.edu.jm. She's in charge of this program out of the faculty office. If you want more information, if you can't navigate, if you can't find the details on the page, please let me help you. Call me at the, at the number that we posted. All right? I know we don't have yes, enough absolutely. time. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And there's another one which Tyree. No problem. Yes, Tarika this, sent yeah. another one to all of you um, for that deadline is for October 22nd. That one is for any U.S. student um, who is in, I think that one is second and third year. Check that out. Did you get that message from Tyreek? Yes, yes, we did. Um, I also, also would like, yes, I would just like to add to that, guys, again. So I've been trying... <laughs> We've been trying our best to convince people to do this program. I know that a lot of you may be, may be dis disheartened because for whatever reason you feel like you're, you're, you're not doing well enough in school. Please, you must, you must try your best to utilize these opportunities that come towards you. Right? For example, with the Huawei Seeds, um, Seeds of this Future Scholarship, it is simply you going to a Zoom meeting. Then you are going to a Zoom meeting and are going to complete one completely online course right probably won't even take you that long it's for two weeks the the Huawei um seeds to the future scholarship program right you have received it in your ue emails as well so please i implore you to look in the groups i know a lot of people don't look in the groups especially since we're getting closer and closer to mid-semester that's probably why it's only one applicant but you get these things in your ue email as well and it's on the faculty website trust me i already have a, a scholarship so i can't really um participate so but Orin, can I'm we tell asking, people too that um people who have mm -hmm. benefited from this scholarship in the past have secured positions jobs, jobs exactly in the uk and, and other countries with huawei i the, the other scholarship i sent to you guys you see that's the gladstone and herman pottinger memorial scholarship that's one hundred and eighty thousand dollars and that is for any mm -hmm. person who is in their any final year, year and in any full-time undergrad program at the UE. So you don't have to become sci physics or math to qualify. Any one of you, come on people. I know part of the problem, part of the stress is the financial mm -hmm. difficulties. Just take exactly. a couple of minutes and put the application in and, and don't count yourself out. If you don't have a ticket, you don't have a chance, okay? Please. Thank you. Exactly. Yes, no problem. Send the um it will be recent in the in the in the um physic, not the physics, sorry, the big FSD group as well. Um again, please check in your emails. You can search for it. Is what we see to the future. The UE itself has sent it out to you guys. I'm I'm begging y'all at this point to do it because like literally free, this is free money free money and people are passing up i know that you might not think that you're good enough or i know you think that you can do it but you can do it for any UE student and guys i know that there's a gpa requirement but